Hello, I'm Simon. If you're new to the channel, then welcome, and if you've been here before, then thanks for coming back. Today's video is all about my new workbench. It's got an MFT top with lots of dog holes, a fence, and a track saw. And in this video, I'm going to take you through some of its features and some of its shortcomings. This is a quick overview of my new bench. The frame is based on Steve Ramsey's basic mobile workbench, but it's been resized so it's the same height as my work surfaces over there and my workmate. It's also been resized to fit a standard MFT style tabletop although I've doubled the thickness of it um, by putting another one of these, actually it was a normal piece of 18mm ply underneath I then drilled out the holes so that I've got double thickness and this is because I want to use it more as a workbench than as an assembly table. Behind the fence you can see I've got an assortment of bench dogs in a bench dog holder which I made and there's a video on that if you're interested. This one meter long fence is the benchdogs.co.uk Mark II fence system. The Mark II fence system has one T-track on the bottom but it doesn't have a T-track on the top. That's given them space to put two lots of markings. So there are markings that start at zero and go to one meter and then there are markings that start at 20 and go to one meter 20. The Mark II system also comes with a small additional fence here which is designed to go underneath your track for your track saw and that sits here. It also comes with a single flag um, that you can slide up and down which works quite nicely. This part here is the optional right hand fence system. It also comes with a flag stop and the brackets to hold it to your MFT style tabletop. And these are marked from 4 centimeters to 20, 29 centimeters. The idea is the left hand side of your blade should just be missing this and the right hand side of the blade should be four centimeters away from the surface of this. Unfortunately if I set this up so that the right hand side of the blade which should be about here take into account the kerf to here is four centimeters so that I can read off these numbers then for the evolution track saw the fence gets in the way. Now to solve that I will need to either push this fence to the right another centimetre and then just take one centimetre off of the numbers which isn't very elegant but would work. However even if I do that I then encounter another problem. So if I move this so that it doesn't get in the way, like so, then it hits up against this post here. The only solution to that is either to fit a dog with a flat face down the bottom that's not actually connected to the fence so that this rides over the top of it or to move the fence over to the left by one set of dog holes which I don't really want to do because I'm losing space I want this to be where it is really so I'm probably go down go down the route of having a flat faced dog here that this can ride over and just using the one post that's locked in place. So I've bought these track dogs and these slot into the dog holes and this one's 
got a collar on it which allows you to adjust the height. What I found, this one goes behind the fence here and obviously you have your piece of wood butted up against the fence so you don't really need a collar on this side because it will just sandwich up close to your workpiece but if your workpiece is narrow then you need a collar further along just to keep the track per perfectly straight. This one I keep nice and tight and secure. This one is loose. This just helps with putting it in the dog holes and then once it's in the dog hole I then just reach underneath the bench and quickly tighten it so that it locks it all in place. I'll show you that now. That's it, and that is rock solid now, it's not going to move. So as long as I've got my piece of work registered against the fence, this should be at 90 degrees. I did buy these little surface top savers. The idea is as if they're three mil high and then they've got a rubber disc on top. And the idea is you place these in the dog holes underneath your work surface. So you have four underneath the side you want to keep, four underneath the side you're cutting. That then leaves a gap underneath so that there you can set the saw up so it doesn't touch the surface of your workbench. So I thought that was quite a good idea, but I found it's a lot more convenient just to use a piece of hardboard. So I have these two pieces of hardboard that I had cut out from an old uh, the back of an old cupboard, and they can be used on their own or one at a time, like this. And they just sit on the workbench and act as a sacrificial surface or if I need to cut something longer than a single fence this is the 700 mil fence it's sold as a 1400 mil fence because it comes in two pieces the 700 mil fence by the way with the um, fence dogs you get just over half a meter um, of space because you hit the dog there so from, from here where it hits the dog to the fence is just over half a metre and it's 52 centimetres in total. If I'm going to use the full length of the fence, uh, oh, sorry, the track, then I set them up like this and these, they're just the half the same length as the track and those, those gaps in the hardboard are to allow me to still use the brackets so that I can lock the fence in place directly onto the bench. This works really well. Obviously you'd have your piece of work underneath this as well. So I'm not actually using these, so I've used them a couple of times, but I find that now I'm just using the hardboard, it just seems to be a better solution for me. And if you're wondering why I have quite so many bench dogs, it was an ordering mistake that I made. I thought I'd ordered four of these tall bench dogs and four short bench dogs and these track dogs. But what I'd actually ordered was two lots of these, um, basically these come in a set, a four plus four set of tall and short bench dogs. And I ended, I'd ordered two lots of that and not ordered the track dogs. So I had to then go and order some more track dogs. So that was just a silly mistake. One last thing, you can see that all the different Allen keys are stuck to the side when I built this I hadn't done any accommodation for um, the allen keys. I like to keep the allen keys with the tools that I'm using them because I've got so many allen keys because every tool comes with allen keys. 
So I just added a couple of magnets to the side that holds all the Allen keys tidy. That's quite a nice addition to my little dog kennel. The saw I chose from Evolution is the R185CCSX Plus. It's very similar to their normal track saw. It costs £10 more but you don't get any track. But the track that you got with the cheaper saw, all the reviews say that it's pretty useless and you need to go and buy track anyway. So I bought um, this track separately. This is the 1400 track, comes in two 700mm lengths with the connecting bars, a very nice bag and a couple of clamps so that you can clamp it to the table. The addition that this has over the standard saw is there's a little LED light which is quite useful. You may be able to see it shining here. It comes with a little hose adapter which uh, I would have had to have made because um, that without this piece doesn't fit my hose. So that hose adapter was quite useful. And it comes with a blade that's got slightly more teeth and it's a slightly more um, advanced blade. It's still a multi-material blade. Incidentally, this saw is cheaper than the um, Festool track, if you wanted to buy the Festool track. The only thing I don't really like about the, tr the Evolution track is that these T-slots are both downward facing I can't really see any real utility for a downward facing T track or two downward facing T track T slots. One obviously I'm using to fix it to the to the bench and I'm using when I use the brackets that the, the track came with. The other one doesn't get used at all. All the accessories you can get for tracks tend to assume that the track has a T-slot that's open on the top which is the Festool design so this one would be open on the top and this one's op open on the bottom um, so that's just something to be aware of if you get this saw things like the parallel guides that you can get may not fit um, the Evolution track because of the this T-slot being the opposite way round to the common saws. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment, then I read them all and I generally reply to them as well. So please do that. If you'd like to see more videos like this and you want to find out what I'm going to be using these parts for, then please subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.